Hi everybody, welcome back to IndyCar on Sunday. I'm Gordon Ross and on the day after a momentous occasion in the borders of Scotland, I just thought I'd uh, look back at the events uh, in Dumfries yesterday and try and set them into some kind of context, uh, bearing in mind the way the media and uh, particularly the, the Conservative Party's uh, spokespeople have been portraying it. Now one of the things which most of you will have noticed recently was that Arlene Foster, the head of the, the Democratic Unionist Party of Northern Ireland, is planning to come over to Fife to take part in an Orange March. Now, before you all start jumping on this and saying this is all bigotry and sectarianism, I know we all know it's bigotry and sectarianism, but the point is that bigotry and sectarianism is precisely what the British state is trying to introduce into the Scottish electorate at the moment. This is how they plan to divide us. They've been unsuccessful now in arguing against independence on the, on the uh, economic front because since the publication of the, uh, the growth report, the growth report has spiked the guns of particularly the Tories who claimed that Scotland wouldn't be able to support itself, would have far too big a deficit, it wouldn't be able uh, to pay for its health service and its other public services out of the tax revenues that it has. Fortunately, uh, that has been completely disproved. And not only disproved by the SNP, but disproved by a bunch of people who are completely dispassionate when it comes to independence. They looked at it from the point of view of business people. Would Scotland, using the British figures, in other words, the, the chairs, the general uh, expenditure and revenue Scotland figures, would Scotland be able to be independent given those British figures? And the answer was a resounding yes, no problem at all. Without any oil money coming into the equation whatsoever, Scotland could still become independent. Yes, it would have a hard time for the first 10 years because uh, there would still be austerity at that point if that's as we applied the Tory methodology for running the country, which of course we wouldn't. So, that particular argument has now been exploded. There is no way that the Tories can now argue that using their figures, independence would be independent. So they're resorting to this old chestnut of trying to do what they did in Ireland hundreds of years ago, to divide the population along ethnic or religious lines by introducing sectarianism into Scotland, importing from Northern Ireland a divisive, unpleasant, poisonous ideology which they hope will split uh, the independence vote or make the, the idea of independence a toxic, um, a toxic subject to talk about because of this idea of sectarianism. So, let's just shoot this one right now. In Dumfries, yesterday, 10,000 people marched peacefully through the streets, waving flags, listening to music from pipers, Scottish pipers, Bengali drummers, and in the company of English Scots who want independence and who are prepared to put that up front, to wave their crosses of St George, to wear their English football tops at a Scottish independence rally and be welcomed and be part of it. This rather shoots down this whole divide and conquer uh, kind of mentality that the British state is trying to foster, if you'll pardon the uh, pun, in Scotland. Yesterday we saw people walking peacefully through a town centre, even waving and exchanging jokes with the people waving their Union Jacks uh, at the march as it went past. Now everybody had a chance to wave their flags and to show their uh, allegiance to their particular argument, but there was no animosity. There was no bottle throwing, there was no police cordons, there was no tear gas, there was no rioting, and of course there won't be, because the people marching through Dumfries are just people. Oliver Mundell was interviewed by ITV yesterday, and I was just uh, amazed at just how much of a clone he is of his old man. He is literally Mundell Minor. He even has the snack beard uh, and the glasses and a little bit of curly hair on top, and exactly the same voice and the same inflections as his father. It's almost as if he'd cloned himself uh, in a petri dish and Oliver was the result. Anyway, Oliver came out with this nonsense about how this, um, this rally was a waste of time because he claimed that it was a nationalist rally, which of course it wasn't. 
He also claimed that Dumfries uh, and Galloway were, or, or the, the, the implication was that Dumfries and Galloway is some kind of unionist heartland. This was the phrase that the ITV uh, presenter used at the end of the piece. To be fair to the ITV guys, they did interview a lot of youngsters. They interviewed children and teenagers. They, inter uh, they also um, interviewed some older marchers as well about why they wanted independence. And that was very balanced. I was pleased about that. But Mandel is trying to characterise this in terms of black and white, of Catholic, Protestant, of Unionist and Nationalist. That's no longer the case. The case is no longer about us and them, it's no longer about Unionists versus Nationalists. It's now about people who want to have Scotland run its own affairs and those who are in the other camp who are worried about what will happen to them if they separate from England and become a separate country. How will things happen in the borders? Now, people in the borders who, who live in Dumfries and Galloway are a mix of people from both sides of the border, as you'd expect, because there's always been a mixing of the two countries at the border. It's natural and it's normal. The Scottish independence movement, or, or GRIP as I like to call it, the grassroots independence people, we, we promote an inclusive Scotland and we promote the idea of an open border with no border checkpoints, with no passports being checked, and with free trade across an open border with England after independence, because we will still be using pounds for a while after that. We won't transfer to Scottish pounds for quite a long time, and in that time there will be efforts made to make sure that the currencies are very close in terms of value so that people can trade easily. So all of these things are, are not a worry. But what we're trying to do is, we're not trying to separate people, what we're trying to do is give people another choice. Instead of going down the road to Brexit with, with the Conservatives, who we now hear that Brexit, um, at its worst, if we do exit without any kind of deal on the 29th of March next year, will lead to fuel shortages, food shortages, rioting in the streets, all kinds of nasty things, no flights in and out of airports, uh, no ships in and out of our ports, huge backlogs of people trying to get in and out of customs control. All of these things are actually a reality, a realistic prospect if there is no deal. Now the question is whether there would be a deal or not, that's still up in the air, we don't know that yet. But people are worried, people in the borders are worried about how they are going to um, sell their milk or or their lamb or whatever other things they, they, they grow or manufacture locally across the two borders. Well, the answer to that is nothing will change. The only thing that would change is that people living on the Scottish side of the border will have decisions on their uh, services, their health service, their education system, their laws, their foreign affairs and their defence made in Edinburgh instead of London, made in a location closer geographically to them. And they will also be able to talk to their local MSPs about whatever issues they have. They can even get in the car and drive to Edinburgh and actually make representations at the Scottish Parliament. A lot more easy uh, than having to drive three or four hundred miles to London to try and uh, get their MP, Mr Mundell, believe it or not, to actually represent them uh, as, as a group of constituents in Scotland, because at the moment he doesn't do that. So what I'm saying to you now is that we have changed the way that independence is viewed. And when you marched through Dumfries, that is the message that we're giving people in Dumfries and Galloway, that we are you, but we're not different. We are the same kind of people as you. We are families, we are elderly, we're disabled people, we're working people, we're young families, we're teenagers, we're children, even dogs are represented in GRIP. Grassroots for Independence people are a huge mix of people. We're not Scottish nationalists. Although there are some SNP members among us, there are also people who have voted Labour. There's even people who have voted Lib Dem and Conservative in the mix somewhere. There are Greens in there. There are people with no affiliations who just want to live in a better country which is run better and run here rather than in some other country. Remember, the purpose of independence is not to hate England. The purpose of independence is for Scotland to become a normal country again instead of a slave nation of the UK because at the moment Scotland is basically just that. It's a country which is which is smothered by a, a larger neighbour and held 
against its will politically uh, and ruled from abroad by another country. And we're the only country in the world to be ruled by another country. We're the only people in the world who prepared to put up with being ruled by another country with a completely different political agenda to our own. We voted 62%, if I remember correctly, to stay inside the European Union and to be able to trade with Europe. 62% of us across the whole of Scotland and every constituency, there was a majority for Remain. And yet, we're being taken out because of what a neighbouring country has voted to do. And that's really what independence is about. It's about being able to make our choices about how we relate to other countries. It's not about hating England. It's not about stopping trade. It's not about putting up barriers. And believe it or not, actually that is what the Tories are proposing. Putting up barriers, pulling up the drawbridge, stopping trade with other neighbours, putting up barriers to trade and making sure... Uh, that we basically shut the door on everybody else and keep our borders closed. If there were any border posts to be put up across uh, the borders of Scotland and England, they would not be constructed by the Scottish state. They would be constructed by what's left of the United Kingdom because they are struggling at the moment to square the circle in Ireland about what happens with their border. And the latest proposal I've heard of from the Tories is a 10-mile wide economic buffer zone. Now this is something which the Chinese, this is what something which the communist state did in order to facilitate trade between the communist system and the capitalist system. They had a buffer zone where the two things could rub alongside each other. This is what the Tories are actually proposing for us to do in Ireland so that we can continue to trade across the border between one part of Ireland and another. They want a 10 mile exclusion zone. It's going to be like North and South Korea. It's going to be a demilitarised zone across the middle of Ireland. And I cannot see anybody in Ireland going along with that. We also know that Arlene Foster, this, this person who is being brought into, imported into Scotland to try and split and poison the, the atmosphere in Scotland, this Arlene Foster person is not popular in Northern Ireland because most of Ireland, Northern Ireland, voted to remain in the EU, and yet the DUP wants to see a border. They say they don't, but they are saying they want to be treated the same way as the rest of the UK. And if they're treated the same way as the rest of the UK, that means border posts, because that's what the rest of the UK voted for. Arlene Foster is some some kind of opportunist here, but she is not actually being, uh, she's not making decisions for herself, she's being used by the British state to try and cause confusion in Scotland. That's not going to happen because we, we might not uh, necessarily agree with the Orange Order, but we're quite happy to let them march to the heart's content. All we need to do is ignore them and not pay them any attention and not give them the oxygen that they need of media attention. The independence movement is not about hating people and it's not about dividing people, it's not about sectarianism, it's not about anything other than bringing Scottish governance back to Scotland. It's just bringing the powers that we should have back to the place where they should be. Where a country, a normal country, would run itself from its own parliament, it would have its own defence, it would have its own foreign policy and it would have it would make all of its own decisions and use all of its own taxes. Scotland, unfortunately, is the last nation on the planet to put up with being run by a foreign power because that's the state of affairs. Now, English people, it's not your fault, okay? This is a historic anomaly that is a leftover of the old um, British empirical or empire view of, of itself. Scotland is the last exploitation colony of the United Kingdom. We're the last the last country which uh, is still in thrall to the UK and which is still having its resources plundered by the UK for the, the revenues that they represent, oil, gas, renewables, whiskey, so on. All of these things are being exploited because we are trapped in the Union. But the Union is breakable. It is an agreement, remember. It's a treaty between two countries, the country of Scotland, the country of England. If Scotland votes to say we want to end this treaty and we want to leave the UK and have all our powers returned and just be good neighbours with England from now on, that's our right. And nobody can stop you from doing that. 
So all you need to do is to support GRIP, the Grassroots Independence People. Join us if you wish. Come along till next March. Every March that we do get, gets more and more people involved. We had 90,000 in Glasgow. In fact, 90, 93,000 somebody estimated. Yesterday we had 10,000 in a small town of Dumfries. We had 3,000 in Dunfermline, and that's a year ago. The, year, the, the summer before that, we had 25,000 in Glasgow during an election campaign. So it's been building and building and building. It will continue to do so. Uh, there are going to be more marches in uh, Dundee. There will be marches uh, in the Highlands, in the Highland capital as well, up at, uh, in Inverness as well, I believe, this summer, and other uh, marches and demonstrations and rallies are planned all across the country. The, the grassroots independence movement's not going away. It is growing like Topsy at the moment. It grows arms and legs. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. IndyCar is a kind of um, a, a hub for passing information to people. And I try to provide uh, as much accurate information as I can at the same time as putting my own uh, spin on it. Because, as I've said before, I'm a polemicist I'm for independence. I try to be balanced about the news and I try not to be... Uh, insulting to the other side but the point is we need people to connect with each other to pass information in order to organize that's how this movement works and it is a movement we're not nationalists we're not a party we're just people who want Scotland to be a country again and not enthrall to Westminster and there are a lot of English people on the border who don't mind that they're quite happy to be part of, of the Scottish side of the border and the English they can do both but if they get fed up living in England, at least it's not far for them to move if they want to come over into Scotland when they feel things are going too, too badly south of the border. They can always flip a couple of miles over the border into Scotland and they'll be welcomed here. That's the end of the broadcast, really. But uh, thank you to everybody who took part in the, the march in, uh, in Dumfries. And I'm sorry, Mr Mundell Oliver, that you're just wrong. There are no unionists, there's no unionist heartland, and there are no sectarian, there's no sectarianism in this movement, and you won't split us, and you won't provoke us into any kind of violence on our marches ever, because we just don't do it. It's not the kind of movement that says we are family people, there's disabled people, pets, the elderly. Are you going to see them in running battles with, uh, with Orange Order thugs? I don't think so. Anyway, the Orange Order can do its thing, uh, quietly, in peace, at the other end of the of, of the country, and I'm sure the rest of us will just simply ignore them because they are the past. They are an evil, toxic, nasty past and a foreign import from another country which Britain ruined in Ireland. They've ruined that country, turned people against one another, and I think it's time that the British state stopped mucking about with other people's countries and just let Ireland reunify, let Scotland be Scotland again, let England flourish again, let England get its, its own, find its own feet, get its own exports back. If England wants to be Brexited, that's perfectly okay. That's their right. We, we, don't, uh, we, we don't take any issue with that, but we would take an issue if you tried to take us with you against our wishes. And that's all. That's all it's about. Anyway, everybody have a good weekend, and remember, you can always contact me during the show online by making a, a comment on the screen, or afterwards you can message me uh, on Facebook Messengers with any stories or ideas you have that you'd like me to talk about. Anyway, I'll speak to you all soon. Have a good weekend, and uh, hopefully I'll return tomorrow. Bye for now.